Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to conserve your battery life here in iOS 7. I've heard a lot of people complaining that they have less battery life since upgrading to iOS 7 and I will be 100% honest with you, I have more than double my battery life with iOS 7. I don't have to charge my phone um, every two days, it's really every third day I have to start charging it. I haven't been using it quite as much, but I've tweaked my settings so much that I'm getting tons of battery out of my phone. I finished the day with 70% battery, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to be doing it on an iPad with Retina here just because it's a bigger screen, but all these settings should be pretty much the same as on your mobile phone. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm just going to go into my settings here, and I'm just going to scroll up to the top. Now the first thing that I want to mention is that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are definitely going to take down your battery, specifically Bluetooth. We all use Wi-Fi a lot, so it's not that easy for us to just turn Wi-Fi off. I will say, if you are in a location where you know you're not gonna have Wi-Fi, it is going to help to turn your Wi-Fi off. Bluetooth, big time. Bluetooth is a huge battery drainer. For those of you who use it in your car, that's great, and I know you don't want to have to turn Bluetooth on and off every time you get out of your car, but you got to decide what's more important, having Bluetooth turn on easily when I get in my car or saving 30-40% of my battery life throughout the day because Bluetooth will really affect your battery that much. 30-40% lower battery if you have Bluetooth on all day. It's searching for Bluetooth devices the entire time. You're draining your battery big time. So those are the first two I look at. Then I'm going to come back to this general area afterwards, but first of all, let's look at wallpaper and brightness. You want to make sure that your brightness is not pumped all the way up. It's nice to have a really bright screen, but that's definitely going to reduce your battery life. So I always tell people to put it at a balance between what's comfortable and as low as you can get it so that you can conserve your battery. Now at the same time here in iOS 7, if you go into this choose wallpaper section, you have the option of choosing either a dynamic or a still wallpaper. A dynamic wallpaper is going to drain your battery. So be aware of that. I'm going to show you another place here in iOS 7 settings to turn off a lot of that dynamic movement on our home screen. But this is where you can start by choosing a still background. You can use a background that you've downloaded yourself as well, but those dynamic backgrounds are really gonna have a toll on your battery. So now let's move down here to the privacy section. There's something pretty important here that I'd like to talk about, and that is location services. You might have been used to this in iOS 6. So these are services that basically use a GPS signal to track where your iPad or iPhone is. A lot of times it's helpful for maps. If you're using a GPS system like Apple or Google Maps, you need to have location services turned on in order for that map system to know where you currently are located. Now you'll notice that I haven't customized this on my iPad yet. On my iPhone, I have. Uh, but for this section, I would turn pretty much everything off that isn't going to need to know your location. So Foursquare is going to need my location because that's a location-based social media platform. Google Search doesn't need to know. Google Maps is going to need to know. Some of these travel apps like Hotel Tonight, they might need to know. But I don't use that app that much, so I'm going to take the chance right now in turning that off. If it needs to know later on, I can turn it back on. Siri is going to need to know. If you ask, uh, how's the weather, Siri is going to need to know where you're located to tell you how the weather is. SkyMap would need to know. Uh, weather Channel, you could search by zip code, or you could just turn that off. Twitter, if you want to tweet your location, that needs to be turned on. And then Yelp, if you want to find cool restaurants and stuff near you, you would need that on. So you can turn as many of those off. Now here's something new to iOS 7. At the bottom of this list, we have this link that says System Services. We couldn't access this in iOS 6. So now here in iOS 7, we have the option of turning off some core services, which I have done on my phone. And the big ones that I turned off was diagnostics and usage. That's just sending information to Apple about what apps are crashing on my iPad and stuff so they can help improve their product. It's great to help them, but when we're talking about battery life, we don't want to send those messages. Same with location-based iAds. I haven't really seen any of those yet. I'm guessing that that might be something coming up in the future. But for now, I don't need that. Popular near me, not sure what that is right now. Let's go ahead and turn that off. If I want to see traffic in my maps, if I want the time zone to set automatically, I would need to leave those on. I do use Wi-Fi. I'm going to leave that on. Compass calibration. I have a Compass app that I do use, and I also use Google and Apple Maps, so I want to leave that on. And call network search. I'm not 100% what that is. You could try turning that off, but it sounds pretty core to me in terms of making my phone calls go through clearly, so I'm going to leave that on. But you can turn 
off as many of these as you'd like, and each one that you turn off is going to preserve your battery more. Now before I go into general and talk to you about a couple of the things, there's one aspect of your battery life that works in iOS 6 and iOS 7 that I only recently discovered but I think has a huge effect on how much battery I've been saving and that is how are your mail contacts and calendars sent set up. We want to set these up to fetch for our mail instead of push. So you can see on my iPad right now it's set up as push where it says fetch new data. If I click on this and I turn push off and then I go to each of these accounts right here and anyone that says push, I want to go in and turn it to fetch. What that means is instead of whenever I get a new email, that email automatically being sent to my iPad or iPhone, it's going to wait until I actually go into that app and I refresh. Now when I go into like say the Google Mail app or the Apple Mail app, it'll refresh automatically for me. And your push notifications still come through, so it'll still say however many unread emails you have. But the difference is with Fetch, those emails are already brought in before you even open up that Apple Mail app to check your emails. With Fetch, it tells you how many new ones you have, but until you open up that app, it's not going to actually bring those emails in. So your iPad or iPhone will be making less communication with the server and therefore saving your battery life and, to be honest, some of your data. It's going to save a little bit of your data plan. Now the other thing is down here you can choose your options for fetch. Do you want it to fetch every 15 minutes, which means do you want your iPad or iPhone to call out to your email server every 15 minutes and say, hey, bring me those new emails? Do you want to do it every 30 minutes, hourly, or as I like to do it to conserve most battery and most data? We can go ahead and put that on manually. Like I said, you'll still get push notifications when you have new emails, just you won't actually have that email on your iPad until you open the app up. So it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it just helps save your data and your battery. So definitely change all of your email accounts to fetch. You will be surprised how much battery you will save. I just actually finished shooting this tutorial and I realized that there's another aspect of saving your battery life I forgot to mention that I see happening a lot. So quickly, I want to go into settings and I'm going to go to general. And in this section down here where the auto lock, passcode lock, all this um, these settings are, there's a very important feature and that is this auto lock feature. So basically what the auto lock is, is after a certain amount of time, your screen is going to lock, like pressing the sleep wake button, where your screen goes black. Now the reason that's so important is because if you, on your phone, let's say you make a phone call, and then you put your phone in your pocket, if your screen isn't going to go black for five minutes, that's five minutes of your screen being bright, of battery that's draining out of your device when you're not using it. So to really make the most out of your battery life, you also want to have this feature in here, this auto lock feature sent to as low as it can go. On the iPad it's two minutes. I think on the phone you can even set it to be a minute. I just wanted to add that in there because um, that's another thing that can definitely help save your battery life in iOS 7. The one last thing I'd like to talk about here in iOS 7, it's in the general settings. And we're actually going to go down to accessibility, which is right here in the second section. This is usually things that um, might be enabled for people who uh, have hearing issues or might be disabled and they want, might want certain ways to use their iPad. But there is one option in here that's going to save us some battery. And that is this option right here in the second section that says reduce motion. And if you read what this option does, and I'm not sure if you can read it in the video, it says that it's going to reduce the motion of the user interface, including the parallax effect of icon and alert. So if you're new to iOS 7, um, you might not know, but when with your background, with the way your, all your folders are set up, when you actually move your iPad, there's a slight movement of those, app, those folders and apps location on the screen to create this cool parallax effect, which is really awesome, but it also drains your battery. So if I go back into my settings and I turn on this reduce motion setting, I'm not going to get that really cool parallax effect, but I am going to get an increased battery life. So that's the last big tip I have for you. If you know you're not going to go on the internet and you're not really going to be using your iPad much, you can also turn on airplane mode. That's always going to help conserve your battery. But trust me, if you watch your Wi-Fi usage, obviously you can't keep it off all the time, keep Bluetooth off whenever you can, keep your brightness as low as you can stand it, go into your mail accounts and put all of your accounts for fetch instead of push, and then also make sure that in your privacy settings that your location services and system services are turned off as much as you can. 
then you will really see a difference in your battery life here in iOS 7. The other thing is, is when I talk about brightness real quick, is that because of the new color scheme, it's kind of so bright, it's very almost playful. If I pull up my little control panel here, I can take my brightness really far down, yet still see my screen very well because the text is in white instead of black, and it just makes it easier to see. So I think this color scheme, although I'm still getting used to it in iOS 7, I think it helps to create... Uh, a better battery life just by the fact that you can turn your brightness down yet still see your screen almost as well as you can with the brightness up. So like I said, I'm at more than double my battery on my phone. I only have to charge every third day or so, maybe every two days to be safe. I used to have to charge it at the end of the day every day because I'd be on 10% battery. Now that 10% doesn't come until 48 hours later. It's awesome. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for today. It's Anson from AnsonAlex.com.